attention to the. Oh, here's the boss. We got to. Okay, guys, it's serious now. And you don't answer your phone, Marta. I was uh, occupied. Okay. We got to get rolling now. Here's the boss lady. Um, I think we have a quorum, so we're going to call the meeting to order. And uh, Taylor, I don't know if you've made me co-chair or not. Um, and so the first thing on the agenda is to have a roll call. All right. All right. Julia Ballard. Marta Larson. Present, and I'm call, uh, participating from Northfield Township, Michigan. Marie Grass. Margaret Reynolds. Present, calling in from Pittsfield Township. Elizabeth Thompson. Present, calling in from Ypsilanti Township. Jennifer Green. Present, participating from the city of Ypsilanti. Buzz Herzig. Present, uh, calling in from Ann Arbor. Jennifer Hackendorn. Present, calling in from Ann Arbor. Jasmine Cooper. Present, calling in from Ann Arbor. Brenda McKinney. Present, um, calling in from Superior Township. Commissioner Somerville. Present, calling in from the city of Ypsilanti. Juliet Ballard. Marie Gress. Do you have quorum? Thank you. I see that Marie's um, is signed in, so she may be just away from her computer. So um, when she comes um, into the meeting, uh, then we can record her as being present. <clears throat> so at this time on the agenda, it's time for um, audience participation, if there is any public participation. So I'm looking, we have four attendees that are not on the commission. And so I would ask if there's anyone in the uh, public that wishes to address the uh, commission, if so, please raise your hand. I see that Monica Prince has her hand up, so I'm gonna allow you to talk, Monica. Hi, I'm Monica Prince, and I'm the director at the Ipsy Senior Center. Um, I just wanted to stop in and say thank you so much for all your work with the RFP program um, to get the ARPA money. It was a very difficult program for me, <laughs> and um I was glad that at least we got some money. And, um, but I also want to say that we still, all the senior services, this ARPA money is great. It's, uh, I'm going to be able to hire a, a second full time person, which I've never had, um, and a bunch of work done on the senior center so that we could make it a little, um, more attractive, but also safer. And, um, but we also, the agencies serving seniors still need some um, consistent money coming in. Um, I have never had um, anything consistent except for $6,000 from the city and, um, well, up until this year, I had $10,000 from the Parks and Rec, County Parks and Rec Department. Right. Um, other than yeah. that, um, I don't have any consistent money except for uh, grants and donations. And I spend an awful lot of my time trying to get that money together so that um, we can serve particularly our focus is on social isolation, which is a really huge problem. Mm -hmm. so, um, but I wanted to thank you and just tell you, you guys are doing a great job. Thanks. And I, I want to say, Monica, how much, I want to ask you, how much did you get, ARPA, how much funding did you get? Um, I got $180,000 and I'm mm -hmm. Still, I had asked for 185 about okay. that, 
And I still don't have an answer of why we didn't get that $5,000. It almost mm -hmm. seems like it just got rounded down by some reason. <laughs> so, I, Yeah, I want to just say that I heard you, I was invited to your potluck you had. Um, oh. And I heard it was really nice. I was invited to attend by Jackie. Oh, yes. Uh, yeah, Jackie invited me. And um, I'm sorry I couldn't make it, but I heard it was really nice. Yeah, we do try and do a potluck every month. Mm -hmm. Now that we're just starting back again since COVID, we didn't want a lot of people sitting around eating together. Mm -hmm. um, but we're we're doing that again. And we've got some, we usually have speakers or so, or entertainment or something. So it's it's always fun. I'll try and make it next. Yeah. I'll try to make it to your next one. Okay, great. Thank mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. Okay, Monica, is that everything that you wanted to share? Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, thank you. Is there anyone else in the audience? Uh, uh, Taylor, you can put Monica back in the audience. Um, is there anyone else in the audience that wishes to address the commission? If so, please raise your hand. Seeing none. Um, Brenda's already had a chance to interact with the person who spoke at the public participation. Is there anyone else on the commission that would like to um, address anything that was brought up? Annie? Yeah, thank you. Um, two things. I know we're going to be talking about this later, but part of the, if you watched our meeting when we tabled the item for ARPA funds, um, if you listen to some of the comments that I made, I had some concerns about the additional need for more dollars for Ipsy Senior Center. Um, we're working on a second process right now, Monica, that, and I, I know I've talked to you about this, that will um, go over, exceed the additional $200 that we have left from ARPA um, that we're not gonna use anymore for mapping. So that'll be put into um, hopefully some more services in Ypsilanti. Um, and the other thing that I'll say is that I'm gonna look into the parks and rec funding. Um, I'm not sure why that happened, but I'm going to ask the commissioners that sit on that board to look into it. Thanks. Um, Annie, could you say, what do you know when that RFP is going to be released? Um, I'm not sure. Um, it's going to be a different process than we've used before, but um, I can share this later when we get to the item or now, but we will likely have something to vote on in two weeks. So it'll be um, I'm not entirely sure because as a commissioner, I'm not involved in that side of things, but I think it'll be a quick RFP and we'll try to have something on our agenda for November 15th to try to get more money out. And one of the areas that I'm focused on is Ipsy Senior Center and Ipsy Meals on Wheels. Okay. Would you please make sure that, um, everyone on the commission on aging gets noticed when that RFP goes out so that we can yep. wait in our districts? Yeah, and I, again, I don't know the process for that RFP either. So um, as soon as I find out, I will. But I know that we'll have something to vote on, um, likely on November 15th. Okay, thank you, Annie. Um, <clears throat> you have your hand up? Yes, thank you. Um, I just wanted to um, uh, comment about one of the uh, statements from Monica. Um, it's it's so nice that the ARPA money was finally approved, et cetera, and 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 that's great. Um, what she also talked about, and I'd like to just uh, underscore that the various senior agencies <clears throat> really need consistent funding so, so they don't spend so many hours and hours and hours and stress looking for consistent money to fund their services. And, and that's where the, um, uh, the millage would be helpful. So I noticed that, I was gonna bring this up later, I noticed that in the, rep the annual report, there was no reference to um, the potential millage. And so I'm wondering um, if uh, 
why that was and if there is a possibility of including that because it is an effort that at least one of the subcommittees is working on um, during this year. But so I just wanted you to know that um, her comment is is really important. She thanked you all and she has a great need. Thank you. I think that <clears throat> when we get to the topic of the uh, annual report, we'll be at, talking about what topics need to be added. And so we'll, I've got it made a note already that that's something that we need to talk about. Is there anything else, uh, anyone else that wishes to address Monica's comments? Okay, seeing none, uh, we'll move on on the agenda to um, approval of minutes from October 6th. Do we have a motion? I move they oh. be approved. Support. Okay, moved by Margaret, supported by Brenda. Um, Taylor, do you want to call the roll? Mm -hmm. yeah. Juliet Ballard. Here. Do you approve the minutes? Yes. Marga Larson. Yes. Marie Grass. Yes, I'm calling in from Los Angeles. Wow, Los Angeles, whoa. <laughs> Margaret Reynolds. Yes. Elizabeth Thompson. Yes. Jennifer Green. Yes. Phyllis Herzig. Yes. Jennifer Heckendorn. Yes. Jasmine Cooper. Yes. Brenda McKinney. Yes. Annie Somerville. Yes. Motion passes. I would just like to note for the record that it's uh, 6.15 a.m. in Los Angeles, so I would like to commend Commissioner Gress for her dedication, and i um, not sure I'd be that dedicated, but okay. Wow, Los Angeles, I'm, nice. I'm at the airport. I'm at the airport. I was already up. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, geez, I can't even imagine what time you had to get up. Um, <sighs> Okay, so the next item on the agenda is the presentation on end of life planning. And I see that our speaker is in the audience. So Taylor, would you move her up to panelist? You need to have one the beginning of life too. <laughs> there we are. Uh, welcome, Ms. Graziano. Um, the way we're going to do this is I'm going to turn the um, uh, floor over to you and let you make your presentation. And uh, would you prefer that people wait until you finish speaking to ask questions, or would you prefer to have people inter interrupt as you go? I don't mind interruptions. Okay. If they get where I don't feel I can get through things, I'll let you know. But yeah, I don't mind interruptions at all. That's great. Um, so I will ask that anyone who wishes to ask a question, raise your hand and give her a chance to call on you before you start speaking so that she has time to compose her thoughts. Um, and um, when you're finished, then I'll take the chair back. So go ahead, uh, Ms. Graziano, and please introduce yourself to start. Yeah, thank you very much. My name is Elizabeth Graziano. I go by Liz, as you can see on the screen. I am an elder law attorney with Shelgan and Trip Law Offices in Ann Arbor. Uh, the firm has eight offices in South uh, Central Michigan. I'm one of two attorneys here in the Ann Arbor office. I'm happy for this opportunity to speak, and I do think I am a bit unique in the attorney world because I also happen to be a nurse. Uh, my undergraduate degree was in nursing, and my family are all involved in the medical field. But uh, your topic for today is end-of-life planning. And I, Megan Kaiser is the one who told me about this opportunity to speak to you. And thank you very much for giving the opportunity and talk about the documents for end of life planning. Uh, the two main documents, I think when people think of end of life, they think of a will or a trust. And I tell my clients and I'm telling you today, those are not the most important things. The two most important documents, which I call life documents, are the durable power of attorney and healthcare power of attorney. Those are the most important documents. They are life documents because when you die, 
any authority that you've granted under the documents dies with them. So a durable power of attorney is primarily for financial matters, but it's much broader. It can handle all sorts of things, depending on what the document says, like even down to telling or placing someone, making placement decisions for where they live. And that comes into play as uh, someone ages and if they start to experience capacity issues. And when we think about capacity issues, basically we're saying, do people know what they're doing? Can they reason? Can they make a decision that's based, they've been able to evaluate and fully understand? And unfortunately, as we've aged, and as a society we've aged, medical science has gotten very good at keeping people bodies alive, but we're discovering the end of brain health, which means the incidence of Alzheimer's and dementia is skyrocketing. So it's very, very important at end of life that individuals take time to consider if they cannot make decisions, who do they want to make those decisions for them? And that's the person that they're going to name in this durable power of attorney, again, for chiefly financial matters or in their healthcare power of attorney. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to kind of stress the healthcare power of attorney, but that document, there's a statute in Michigan in place, and that document is only effective when two physicians say you're not capable of making your own decisions, then they call it, if someone's in an institution, they tend to say we're activating the healthcare power of attorney, which means the agent, they're going to stop honoring what the client says or the patient says and look to the agent to make those decisions for them. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes people are pretty low on the capacity uh, spectrum. And I will say a lot of times the physicians still don't activate it and allow them to make their decisions. It almost seems that if someone's starting to make decisions against their interest, then they're concerned about whether or not that's a reasoned decision and that whether or not they have capacity to make those. So I always tell my clients, look, you can go out of this world making your own decisions to the very end. But if that doesn't happen, think about who you want to make that decision for you. Um, document, our document goes on for many pages and includes um, all sorts of things that the agent can make. And one important decision is that we include a specific paragraph in their end of life, which requires a, a separate signature. So making the client aware that the person that they're nominating here has the authority to make those end of life decisions should it come up. Mm -hmm. um, and we, you know, have the, the client sign that as a separate paragraph. I do recommend once the document's done that they give it to their providers. We have two wonderful hospitals here in Ann Arbor and uh, I'm more familiar with U of M, but it has a patient portal and we give our clients the documents on a thumb drive. You can plug in that dumb thumb drive and upload it right to the patient portal. So mm -hmm. any provider that you're using, it's there. If you show up in the emergency room, that document's ready. And I'm told that St. Joe's has the same capabilities. So, mm -hmm. so sign, get it done and get it in um, your physician's file and the preferred hospital file. Um, one thing that you can also grant in it is HIPAA authority. So, and sometimes I do a freestanding document for that also. So who do I want to get authority for me? I have three kids, three stepkids. I want any of them to get the information, but I don't want, I want my daughter, Susie, making decisions for me. Um, but if you want to give all of them HIPAA authority, let them be able to call in, gosh, mom's in the hospital. How's my mom doing? That kind of thing. You can grant it under the HIPAA authority. So just a separate paragraph. You don't have to name all of them in a healthcare power of attorney. And I do recommend to clients that they name one person. Often there's a big discussion if they have two or three children, they want them all named, which we can do, but it's really not recommended. You don't want your doctor, your hospital, anybody else 
making decisions by committee. What happens if they can reach one and not the other, or worse yet, that, that the two disagree? So name one person, name at least one alternate, um, preferably two alternates if that person is unavailable. And when you, on the documents, we put the person's name in, then we put their relationship to mm -hmm. uh, the patient. It's a neighbor, friend, spouse, child, um, anything that'll help and a valid phone number and valid email address. You can include the mailing address too. And I know those change all the time, but if somebody shows up in the ER unconscious, the faster they can get to your agent, all the better for the patient. So give the information that you have at the time. Um, that's the best that you can do. Um, The document is notarized and witnessed. We have two witnesses. Sometimes people pull things offline. I just advise them to be very careful with that. If you don't always get what you pay for and you may not recognize the document has a different name, but if for any reason someone has a document that they have that they're getting signatures for, you can go to a bank and have a notary the witnesses cannot be named in the document and cannot be family. So that's a big deal. If you come in and you had my two, your two children witness the document and then the receiving hospital or healthcare provider says, this isn't valid, I can't honor these wishes. So really important that they choose uh, non-family members for the document. Um, and I do recommend that clients talk to who they're doing, uh, asking to ask as agents, and even their children, if they want to talk to them in whole, you have three kids and you say, look, I did these documents, I named Susie, she's the oldest, but I do expect you to confer with the other children. That's a paragraph or a sentence that I'll write into my documents if they originally wanted all three children, and we um, convince them that they should just name one, they can still confer and work together. And then talk about the hard stuff about end of life. Listen, if I'm in a coma, I'm 95, and I've lived a really good life, don't do heroics. I don't want to be on a ventilator. I don't want to be on tube feedings. I, You can't prepare them for every situation, but you can prepare them for the most common. And I tell parents, uh, this is kind of the last thing you can do for your child, the last act of a parent, you're instructing them, give them the okay, to make difficult decisions, give them the okay, to make decisions that might mean your end, the end of your life, let them know that you're good with that, you respect them, you trust them. And they're difficult decisions to have. And sometimes even in front of me, some people you know, some people are, yeah, named Susie, he, she'll pull the plug. Uh, and some people just fret about it. It's very, very difficult. And I try to do it in a empathetic way, but also a matter of fact way, because these, it's just the facts of life and it's things that must be addressed. Um, I guess I have a little time here. Do you have any particular questions I'm happy to address? I do. Oh. Yep. Um, I I don't think I'm driving here. Raise your hand so that we have turns. Okay, let me do this. Um. So I have Jennifer Heckendorn. Uh, hi, Liz. Um, so hi. my question is, does the um, medical power of attorney have to be notarized or can it just have two witnesses? That one can be two witnesses. Okay. Um, and my next question is, in terms of, um, in terms of uh, um, if someone is already deemed incapacitated, what happens then if they haven't designated someone to um, go ahead and make their decisions? Yeah, really good question. And that's a really unfortunate situation. Um, we talk about probating a will, but if you're still alive and you haven't uh, 
designated anyone through these documents, unfortunately, that's going to land you back up in probate court. And most commonly, it's a petition for guardianship. And I will tell you that the hospitals right now are just filing um, what I think is a ton of them, because baby boomers are aging, have reached old age, and it's a really unfortunate situation. Um, and then the hospital tries to find someone as guardian to make medical decisions for that person. If there's family, there is a statute, it's called the priority statute in Michigan, where the judge must um, name a family member if one is available and willing and suitable to serve. But otherwise, for people who have no one, you can end up with a guardianship agency. There are agencies that this is what they do. Um, not honestly the most touchy-feely care. It's difficult work, 24 hours availability. But unfortunately, yeah, that person gets a uh, ends up with a guardianship. They're in court. There's annual, the proceedings initially are in court, and then there's annual filings with the court until the person passes. So most unfortunate situation and really one that I try to counsel my clients to avoid. Um, Elizabeth, nice Hi. name. <laughs> uh, <laughs> thank you so much, Attorney Graziano, for being willing to make this presentation. Um, those of you who might not know about uh, the firm Shaohin Trip is um, known for uh, being helpful on the state level. They've done a lot of advice to the uh, State Department of Health and Human Services and involved in supporting uh, the aging sector for years. They also do some great training. And so we feel really fortunate to have you here. I'm wondering if you could speak to how does a person get started, especially um, people who may not have many financial resources or who've never worked with an attorney before. They don't even think gee, I need to talk to an attorney about this. What would you advise? Yeah, I'd start with legal services. So they do, um, you know, attend, especially people with modest means, they do attend to those needs. This is a document. Uh, both documents are fairly common and they definitely can meet the needs of someone. Sometimes there are law days in a community. I participated in one um, quite a few years ago, but it's just a one day where lawyers come in and do pro bono services um, and, you know, can get their documents that way. There is also a proposal before the legislature now for a uniform power of attorney act. And if that comes forward, um, the, the uh, uniform power of attorney would be online and uh, individuals could print it and name their agents. And as I said, just go to a bank to get notarized. And that would be very helpful. I'm also aware you can ask your physician. Uh, several patients have brought in documents that they, you know, they have a form, just a stack of them. They, they can't get, guide them, give them legal advice, but they have a form that patients can fill out. Um, I like our forms are very robust and, you know, really cover every situation that we as a firm have come across, we constantly keep them updated, but I am well aware that um, that that kind of service is out of, um, out of touch or out of ability for many, for many persons, but they should have faith. They can still get service. Um, when you refer to legal services, would you please spell out what that is and where someone might find them? Yeah, so in Ann Arbor, it's Legal Services of South Central Michigan. Uh, their office, I still believe, is downtown. So it's free legal aid, basically, or need-based. They may have a small fee, but they definitely attempt to give services and do so within the client's means. They don't do everything, but I am aware that they do powers of attorney for individuals. Um, I think, Brenda, you're up next. Yeah, I had a question, two things. Um, those forms that you get from your doctor and you need someone to, you name the individuals that you want to have power attorney, 
and then they sign them and then you have to have their signatures notarized do they have to be in person yeah so good question the problem. so the, it's the problem yeah so yeah people. so actually that's not necessary for your witness or for the people who accept the documents there's an acceptance of appointment, which are the last pages on it. So it requires the person you've named to accept the appointment. It's not their signature that needs to be notarized and or witnessed. It's your signature. You are the person that the document is about. You're the person that's giving the authority. So you can take that document and get your signature notarized, get your signature witnessed, and then you can give it to individuals. Yeah, um, if you want to do that, or you can just send it to the hospital or your healthcare provider like that, the medical power of attorney. I prefer to get the signatures of of um, the agents, but it's not necessary. They just have to sign it before they use it. And the form does not have to be notarized and does not have to be witnessed. Also on the documents, it says counterparts accepted as originals. So if you scan it in, or if you give someone a copy of it, the person you've named in your healthcare power of attorney, and they, for whatever reason, the hospital doesn't have it or whatever, they can sign it at the time, or they can sign it right before they use it. So don't let that stop you from executing the document. Okay, my other question, like if you have a spouse and a child and you don't have those forms filled out, do they automatically have power attorney? No, no, they don't. And there is um, there is some information before the legislature now, there's a bill now to get uh, it's called the surrogate decision maker. That's for medical power of attorney. Um, I will tell you that oftentimes hospitals do look to that person if someone is very ill and they're in the hospital, they do sort of collectively allow that to happen. Um, technically, it's not supposed to happen, but in practicality, that's not the way it works. Why wouldn't you, your spouse be, why wouldn't your spouse have uh, medical power attorney? Yeah, because there is no statute, there is no common law, there's nothing that gives them authority to do that. As I said, if this new bill passes with the surrogate decision maker, that is what will happen. Your your spouse will. But again, there is no law to support that. Practically speaking, though, if you go into a hospital or other um, institution, let's stay with hospitals. Usually they look to the family to make those decisions. It becomes a bigger deal when they go out into, say someone is in the hospital, it's dealt with, and now they're going for rehab at a place. The rehab facilities require a valid power of attorney. They have to just under, they are under federal law. It's a whole different game. So sometimes if you've been able to make decisions for your spouse while they're in the hospital and they've recovered from whatever their medical crisis is, you have no document in place, but now they need to go to rehab. Sometimes that's when the guardianship gets filed because that institution that's receiving your spouse needs to have paper on paper, someone has authority to make those decisions. So on the financial side, because I focused a lot on the medical, on the financial side, if you have joint accounts, your spouse has authority to make those, to, to handle your finances. Do you have a phone number, Elizabeth? <laughs> yes. <laughs> my, phone, my phone number is 734-352-6950, and that's our general intake. Um, Margaret? Yes. Um, I have a couple of questions. You mentioned um, uh, you mentioned that there uh, the witnesses on a particular document could not be family. What mm -hmm. what document were you referring to? Um, that the healthcare power of attorney, and that's immediate family. I want to expand that a little bit. Anybody named in the document. So if an individual that has no family, but they're naming their neighbor, their good friend, Susie, so it's and such. Nobody named in that document can be a witness. It invalidates the document. And if you think about it, yeah. if someone doesn't have capacity and they've got, you know, someone, 
you know, we deal with exploitation too. So you stick a power of attorney in front of someone naming um, Joe Criminal and Joe Criminal witnesses it with his wife. It, he's named as the agent under there and he's done the witnessing. So that's a protection thing to avoid exploitation, to have completely third parties witnessing this um, and not empowering uh, someone wrongfully. Yeah. Um, okay, thank you. One other question. Um, in the state of Michigan, and it, there is a requirement, if you want to be cremated, is there a document that you need to sign prior to to death. It's yeah, really good, really good question. I sort of skipped over that. In the healthcare power of attorney, you can name a funeral representative. Desig you can designate someone in there. You can also do a uh, Michigan law allows for that. You can also do a freestanding funeral representative designation where you have the opportunity to add in those kind of preferences in your document and um, that's the way to do it. You can incorporate a little bit of that in the healthcare power of attorney, um, but that would be the place for denoting something like cremation. You can, of course, do prepaid funerals uh, and get all of that in place. There, I, I was, I was thinking there was a particular document that was online that you could sign. No. Yep. Okay. I, I think it would be the funeral representative designation. Okay. If you came to my, I'm not sure what's online, but if you came to my office, that's what I would draft for you. Okay. A funeral representative designation. And there may be one online. Okay. Yep. Taylor? Um, I was just hoping that you could send me names or information on some of the legislation you've already started talking about. I know right now that there is some work on guardianship Right. As of right now, but you had mentioned the surrogate as well as something else that I wasn't aware of. Um, but could you send that to me and I can disseminate out to the coalition and to our website for that in, in your contact information? So then that way people can kind of track it, knowing when they have to put in public input. Right. And I'm trying to think what the other statute I talked about. Yeah, the guardianship reform and those they're moving on now. Mm -hmm. uh, those bills have been redone a few times and uh, they're moving forward. Surrogate to, oh, the Uniform Power of Attorney Act. Yes, that one, because I think that's fantastic. I'm also a nurse and was doing clinical services in our agency. We have a lot of people who have issues with the power of attorney, medical power of attorney. Um, a lot of physicians, I feel, don't actually know the laws as well right so i never encouraged people to go from their physician's office especially if they want to just have something on file but it's not activated yet right um physicians forget to make a signature or they give people a hard time so i highly encourage people to utilize the legal services and elder law if anybody um instead of going straight online or to your physicians yeah, great. So I'll see what I can um, find out. Do you have a email, Taylor? Yep, I'll drop it in the chat. Great, thank you. Um, Elizabeth. Yeah. Um, we often hear um, people talk about living wills and advanced directives, and a lot of information seniors have available is not from the state of Michigan. So this terminology is thrown around and people really don't know what it means. So I was wondering if you could clarify, because I have people ask, uh, how do I do a living will? Or uh, what's an advanced directive? And how does that relate with the uh, durable medical power of attorney? Yeah. Uh, good question. So yeah, I believe the proper name is the healthcare or medical power of attorney. And the other terms can have different meanings, but in general, a patient advocate dev designation, advanced directive are either part of or other names for the healthcare power of attorney. Um, some documents go through more step-by-step -step and will give you 
most of them I've seen, it's if I'm in a permanent state of coma with no hope for recovery, I don't want to be intubated, which means put in a breathing tube. I don't want to receive tube feedings. I want to receive hydration, you know, those sorts of things. I used to have that in my document and I don't use that anymore because each individual, it takes extreme conditions and often what comes forward when uh, someone has an acute medical crisis doesn't fit in that situation. And so you're, you know, here's the client trying to, or the agent trying to measure and say, did mom want this or does not mom want this particular thing they're being offered like tube feedings or, you know, a uh, nasogastric tube or something like that. Instead, I encourage patients to make decisions. I mean, generally, if you're a young person, people want everything done. They're, you know, gosh, my kids are three and five. Of course, if there's any opportunity, you know, do it. A lot of times elder folks or someone with a health, a chronic health problem, maybe they reach the point where, you know, when the good Lord says it's time to go, just let it happen, you know, and those are, I think they're questions and situations that are best addressed uh, in person and having one of these very difficult discussions. So does that answer? Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Jennifer Green. I think you may have answered this when you answered Elizabeth's question, but my question is, is the medical power of attorney and healthcare power of attorney the same thing? Yes. Okay. When I use that word, when I use that term, yes. All right. And generally in Michigan, that's the terms. All right. Thank you. That was it. Sure. Brenda? Yeah. I have, um, if someone wanted to come to you, uh, what is your fee? So it depends on what they're coming for. In general, intake takes, I charge $300 an hour. Intake takes a $300 retainer for an hour consultation. And then draft the forms is an additional. Yeah, it, yes, is addition, and it depends on the situation, what you need and what um, goes forward. So, you know, certainly it is people with means to be able to do that but I want people to understand that that's available to everybody through legal services and hopefully even more available if we get the Uniform Power of Attorney Act in place. And one last question. Sure. Um, we're going to have a town hall in June uh, uh -huh. 24, and we're gonna. this is going to be on the western part of the county. Would you be able to attend and provide some doc information or um, for this event? Yes, very likely. Um, I don't have the 2024 calendar out uh, or, or it's available, but my schedule certainly isn't available, but I'd be very happy to. If I'm um, in town and available, I'd be very happy okay, to address. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, you're welcome. Phyllis? I just wanted to comment about what you were saying before. Uh, I, I've I've learned or I've changed my mind. I, originally, I thought, oh, I don't want any extraneous measures. And and I remember a friend had a document that spelled out all kinds of specific things. In this situation, I don't want this or I do. And, and I've learned that sometimes I think this is, I, mean, I guess I'm asking, is this what you mean? There, there are circumstances where uh, perhaps a feeding tube is necessary in order to address a certain situation or medical condition, and then the the patient can go on to um, uh, recovery. And right. so it's better not to include all the little what ifs because we don't know how they all fit together. So thank yeah. you for bringing that up. Yeah, yeah, very much. And that's a matter of opinion, but I'm with you on that one. Thanks. Yeah. Looks like, Brenda, do you have another question? Oh, no, I'm sorry. Let me take my hand down. Okay. I think, I think that's all the questions. Um, yep. 
Is there anything more? No, oh, well, it. Oh, my okay. Right there. Jennifer? Yeah, I just wanted to mention that when I work with clients uh, around this a lot, I do a lot of uh, grief work and I work with older adults. I like to frame it in a way that when they have these conversations with their family, that the you know, that helps that person in the end because they're not actually making decisions, they're honoring wishes. And so people get That's really good. nervous about, I can't make this decision for my parent. Well, if you've had this conversation, you're not actually making the decision, you're honoring um, the decision. So that's the way I like to frame it too, to help people feel better about that. Yeah, I'll use that. I like that very much. I have <laughs> one client that would not may name any child and said, mm -hmm. I don't want my child to make those. I don't want any of them to have that burden. So we talked it through more and I said, you know, you could end up with a guardian. I mean, to the point that they didn't want to sign the document. And I said, mm -hmm. you could end up with a third party guardian making those decisions. How do you feel about that? And right. so I, I like that. That's um, framing it in that way, Jennifer. And Taylor? I just wanted to know, I cannot, we don't have a chat because it's a webinar. Um, yes. I do have your email address because I was part of the chain that Elizabeth mentioned. So I'll reach out to you, okay? Yeah, that's great. Thank you. Yeah, I did pop up as we were talking here and yeah. saw that, that there was no chat. Yeah. So it's really been my pleasure talking to all of you and thank you for the work that you're doing for and on behalf of our seniors. There's an awful lot of them out there and they really do need um, your guidance and your support. Thank you very much. Um, and I would note that all of our meetings are recorded and uh, the recordings eventually end up on our website. So this will be available in the future for anyone who wasn't able to make this meeting, but would like the information that was shared at this meeting. So. so thank you again. Thank you so much for coming. Thank sure. you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay. Next item on the agenda is the County Fund Mapping Project. And uh, I think I'm looking for Commissioner Somerville. There you are. Um, yep. Do you have anything you want to share about that before we get into it? Um. Yeah, I guess it's pretty brief. Let me pull up my notes. I mentioned earlier, there will be a process um, for a second round of funding. It's going to be much different and much quicker. And we anticipate having something for the commissioners to vote on on November 15th. Um, and as mentioned, I think think before on this call, we will be partnering with the Ann Arbor Area Community Foundation to, um, instead of duplicating efforts on the countywide mapping. And as soon as I get any information on the RFP, I'll let you all know. But I, from what I've been told, it'll happen quickly. It's going to be a little bit different. <clears throat> and all decisions, all of the decisions on that have not been made yet. So. And Annie, can you tell us if, um, if the the memo that we sent up to the board of commissioners was discussed so that it was clear that to all the commissioners uh what it was we were actually asking on the fund mapping project um we've made it clear well at least justin and i have made it clear in board leadership that that was the intent um we have not discussed it we have discussed it at the board table actually everybody's aware at least i from my recollection um that it was for countywide and that the after the ann arbor area community foundation is already doing it so I don't, speaking um, when, I say, when i say the county fund mapping project i'm referring to um, accounting for how county funds are spent on senior services or aging adult services um, not what's happening all around the county so there are two parts to this request yeah. And so, yes, the Ann Arbor Area Community Foundation is mm. making uh, efforts to help uh, aging adults all around the county. But what we're interested in is um, yes, for funds that are flowing through the county. That is part of what the Ann Arbor Area Community Foundation is doing, which is why we're not doing it anymore. Oh, OK. Yeah, oh. that's why we don't we don't want to do the same. It just doesn't make sense for us to hire a consultant if a consultant's already doing it. Mm -hmm. okay. So I've already been, they've interviewed all the commissioners about like what we think the county is doing. They're talking with staff. They're working with the budget office to get, you know, peel back all the layers and figure out 
And as I mentioned at our last meeting, it's not much. So. Okay, excellent. Thank you. So I see that Dina has your hand up. Thank you. We answered it, Annie, but I'm just, I just want to make sure I'm hearing you correctly. So <clears throat> there was money set aside from ARPA funding for the county to do that mapping. And so you're saying that um, the county does not need to use that, those funds because the Ann Arbor Area Community Foundation has commissioned a consultant to, to do that, that exact same work. Yes. And they are doing both like internal review of the county and countywide efforts that deal with older adults. Mm -hmm. It's part of their larger initiative overall to look at like human services in our county, just as a, like an other outside note. Mm -hmm. um, so they're really interested in both like looking at how agencies can work together and not duplicate efforts, including government and private um, nonprofits. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. Okay, Elizabeth. Since we made uh, a specific and narrow request about what our commission was interested in finding out in terms of spending of county funds, I'm wondering if uh, it might be a wise idea to copy the um, request that we or the clarification we recently submitted to the Board of Commissioners to the Ann Arbor Community Foundation. So as they look at things, they'll know that there's this one specific question we'd also like addressed. I think that would make sense, yes. And I know that um, at our last meeting, I saw that um, Chris was on during that when we had that discussion, but I will, yes, I think that makes sense. So, Annie, are you taking responsibility to convey that to the community foundation or should one of us do that? You know, um, it'd be helpful if someone else wanted to do that. And it maybe just CC me and Justin on it. Okay, so Elizabeth as board secretary, yes. would you be willing to- Awesome, I appreciate that. Yeah. I could do it also, but I'm learning how to ask for help these days. <laughs> You don't want to happy kill to do it. The communications committee is there to communicate. <laughs> and we don't yeah, and I, I will say I, I apologize. I don't. I hate not having more details on. I know that the from what staff has told me, it's going to go fast. It's going to be different, and um, you know, I agree with not wasting. You not not wasting, but I would prefer us to use this the dollars on direct services rather than duplicating efforts um with our partners. So. I agree. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Okay, so I think maybe we don't need to talk about the fund mapping project any further then, because I think we, you know, have an agreement. And Elizabeth, if you want to convey that information to the Ann Arbor Area Community Foundation, yes. and uh, then we'll put keep it on our agenda for the next meeting, and hopefully by then we'll have more information. Okay, so the next thing is the draft of the annual report, which Elizabeth prepared. Um, I would note that our objective today is to um, get concepts in there, not to wordsmith and not to, um, uh, you know, deal with individual typos and those sorts of things. So if there's anyone that has any interest in working on the exact wording and that sort of stuff, then I would encourage you to speak to Elizabeth. Um, but what we want to talk about right now is what topics should be included in here that are not, and is there any information in here that anyone feels is incorrect? Um, so um, the, I do have listed that um, it's been requested that we address the potential millage question as one of the topics. But other than that, I'm going to turn the microphone or the uh, floor over to Elizabeth and let you manage this discussion and let me know when you're done. Sure, thanks. Um, we uh, This is modeled on uh, the annual reports we've submitted uh, in the past, especially last year. The, the goal is to have it be, excuse me, there, I've got people phoning me. <laughs> the goal is to have something short because uh, we want something that highlights the issues uh, that we've discussed. These are the uh, objectives we began with and put uh, presentations around. 
um, and also highlights our accomplishments. The town hall is the first one, uh, the, uh, and our goal to continue to provide information through another town hall and other types of information, as Marta pointed out, we give, uh, make the recordings of all our presentations available as a resource. We've already discussed um, our support of uh, mapping funds. Uh, we did uh, support the uh, allocation of ARPA funding uh, to uh, older adults and helped advocate for the, the use of it. Uh, we've uh, supported and uh, been involved in on an individual basis, as well as meeting with Chris Lemon as Car Commission of the Whole on the development of their countywide strategy. We heard the uh, report from the Transportation Summit and uh, what it there is trying to pick the most, what appeared to be the most significant, important need that the Transportation Summit identified that um, we could highlight. Again, with the Housing Bureau for Seniors trying to highlight the most important need that on a county level could be supported. We um, also are trying to raise awareness of needs. So that's where those bullet points came from, our initial objectives and what we've done to meet them. We talked about the, uh, Phyllis, you raised the question about the potential millage. The reason that wasn't as a bullet point is specifically is, um, unless I miss something in the review of our minutes and presentations as I put together the draft, um, we have not taken a official position on a millage because as Chris Lemon explained to us, there is not, and, and, is, and Commissioner Somerville has also explained to us, there is not a millage proposal right now being considered by the Board of Commissioners. There may well be discussion about it in the future. So that's why it wasn't in there. If there are suggestions about how that topic should be addressed, now's the time to, to, to make some suggestions and have discussion around that. Well, <clears throat> it seems to me that if you, um, this report is um, including the issues that the Commission on Aging is discussing, and one of the subcommittees is discussing the potential millage, then I, I would think it should be listed somehow for the Board of Commissioners to know that this is something of interest. If they don't have a, I didn't realize they didn't have anything in their, whatever, I, I forget the term you use, that they're not considering it at this point. However, if our, coalition is addressing it for discussion in some way, it, hence we have a committee on it, then, and this, if we're looking into it and this report of what we are doing is going to the Board of Commissioners, then I would think that it might be um, important to include that as um, a relevant topic. Otherwise, they're going to say, well, for the Commission on Aging didn't even talk about it, so we can let it go for another seven years. And you heard 
just before when Monica said, we got the ARPA money, but it's time limited. And, and, and the, in the meanwhile, all these agencies are wasting time going after sustainable funding. And it's the seniors in our county that are losing because efforts are put into going after funding as opposed to providing services. So I'll get off my my soapbox. And folks on the uh, subcommittee on the potential millage have a suggestion for how they would like this issue raised or identified in the report. I don't know how to raise my hand, so I'll put me in line. Well, are you going to respond to the question about the potential millage subcommittee? Yeah, um, I that haven't had time to. I've... Oh, go ahead. Do you want me to go or are you going to go? Go ahead, Marie. Sorry. That's what I was going to ask you to go ahead. Oh, okay. Um, so I haven't had time to look at what you all sent, um, but I know on previous years, we had a list of our committees. That way, the potential millage committee is still seen and visible. It's They can see that this is what we've been talking about. Usually in the part that you shared earlier, it's, yeah, covering more of what we have, um, who we've hosted and what we've learned about. Um, and so I think having that second page with the list of committees is probably a good way to go. Brenda, you had your hand up. Yes, I was just going to respond to Phyllis that um, say yes to seniors are really a uh, leading this and I'm sure the commissioners are definitely uh, hearing about it from them. But, but that's separate. That's mm -hmm. very separate from the Commission on Aging. Mm -hmm. And this is a report of, of the Commission on Aging. I like Marie's suggestion that at least there's a reference to a conversation among our coalition here uh, in that there's a committee. But you were concerned about uh, by not having that in our report that it could be years before the uh, commissioners. But I can tell you this, say yes to uh, seniors are really pushing it. I just wanted you to be, you know. Oh, I sure, know. You know I, so. I sit in on those on right those meetings, so the, and that's not, very different. That's, right. That's another thing. But if they are going to let the commissioners forget, believe me. <laughs> well, I'm wondering. Sorry. Again, this is an ask to that subcommittee membership. Uh, in the past, the the subcommittees we have some of their work is done, like the ARPA subcommittee for all intents and purposes is done. Communications just kind of communicates. I'm wondering if we, the subcommittee on potential millage and the one on future planning could submit a sentence or two that sums up what they have discussed is that might be a possible way of reflecting not decisions we've made, but discussions that the subcommittees have had, which would give a little bit more information. So that's an ask to, to those two subcommittees, if they might be willing to email me. Thanks, Margaret. What's the answer? Go ahead, Marie. Oh. Yeah, I can I can do that. Great, thank you. Margaret. Yeah, I'm fine. Maybe. Um, Phyllis, you might want to mute. Um I oh, Elaine. Hi, I'm on a Zoom. I wanna I don't know quite where it would fit, Elizabeth. Um it doesn't fit in the objectives, correct? We didn't have it as a, an objective. Oh, 
and it doesn't fit in presentations. So um, I think I think we need to acknowledge that we have had discussions about this um, and maybe state that we have not yet taken a position. Um, but I don't quite, I guess you're wanting to put it on another where you list all of the committees. Uh, I think if we list it, we need we need to list the others. Yes, but I'm asking specific people suggested that that might be a place to do it. And I'm thinking to capture some of the comments I've heard about the problems a millage would respond to and a couple sentences about what each committee discussed. So I guess I should broaden that yeah. to all the committee chairs, email me a sentence or two about what they discussed. Probably some of those will be pretty short, like the ARPA one, because we advocated for it or we whatever. And some might be a bit longer. Um, but if you could email that to me as soon as possible, we in the communications committee can take a look. Marta, yeah. your hand is up. Yeah, I just went back and looked at what we've done in our annual reports to the Board of Commissioners. And the sentence that we included in those reports was support merit-based ballot requests for aging services millage. Um, and so I think maybe that might be a good starting point for adding a, a bullet point. Um, <clears throat> and I'm not sure why that didn't make it into the um, list of 2023 objectives, but I would propose that that be one of our objectives for 2024 that we consider supporting. Could you repeat that, Marta? Yes. That. And I can also send that. That would be great. Thank you. Consider supporting merit-based ballot requests for aging services millages. Yep. Okay. Yeah. I'll I'll provide that to um, Elizabeth in writing so that she doesn't have to try to write it all down right now. Thank you. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. Taylor. I just want to uh, make a suggestion to Ms. Brenda. Make sure that when you set, since you're the committee chair of the town hall, maybe to list out all of the people you've already secured for upcoming town hall or last. No, because it's reflected. No, nope, this is a read report about what we've done. And also, um, I reiterate, if we want it to be read, it needs to be short. And we need to specify the points that we think are most important. We have under such a wealth of information that if we just took our presentations alone, we literally have hours of really great information that if somebody sat through, we could have, a, I think, a two day long intense workshop about older adults in Washtenaw County. So trying to boil that down to two pages is really a challenge, especially don't forget what you see is not formatted. Jennifer Heckendorn on our committee is has kindly taken the task of what I call it making it look pretty, but making it look readable, professional, and really underscoring the high points. So we need to think about being brief. So you could also send suggestions, if you haven't gone now, about what you think could be eliminated. Marta. Um, the other thing we need to include um, is some indication of what our objectives are for 2024. And I would propose that we annotate the 2023 objectives update by some sort of indication that this is also a 2024 objective so that we can just look down the list of objectives and as a group decide, okay, yes, we're keeping this. Yes, we're keeping this. No, we're not gonna keep that as an objective. I would propose that we do that as part of this meeting so that Elizabeth has some information as to board or a commission consensus on what we wanna look, for, look forward to doing in 2024. Um, That's a great idea and a great way of, without being repetitive, indicating what we're going to look at going forward. I'm wondering, Taylor, would you be able to share a screen that has this report? 
and then we can talk about each objective and do exactly what Marta asked. Do we want to have that continue to be an objective next year? I just gotta find it. Yeah. Let's do it. I'm ready for a break. Do we take, well, we're near the end. What, Marta, what do you think? I think that our break scheduled we, after this. Why don't we take a break while Taylor looks for that and then we'll come back and finish this topic. Does that sound okay with everyone? Yep, I gotta go to the lake. I would propose that everyone uh, turn off their video and then when you're back, turn it back on so we know you're with us. Taylor, it's the one you sent out to everybody. Yep, I found it as soon as we asked for <laughs> the break. Okay, cool. And the discussion. We're going to resume the meeting where we left off, which was the discussion of the objectives for 2024. And Taylor was going to share the draft report we're looking at so that we can go down and uh, let Elizabeth um, lead the discussion on um, which of these things that we had for 2023 objectives are going to become our 2024 objectives. So, Elizabeth? Okay. So our first objective, provide information on concerns of older adults. And I would just say, people can say, yes, that seems good. Or no, I don't think we need to take a vote on it. We can just indicate by thumbs up or nodding or saying out loud. Let me say, ask for people to verbally respond. Should we include provide information on concerns of older adults as a 2024 objective? Yes. 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 Okay. Yes. The next one, MAP funds supporting the aging sector. Yes. 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 Oh. Maybe a good way to do this is to ask if anyone objects rather than asking if everybody Oh, objects. good. Thank you. Thank you, Marta. Well, As, can, we yeah, update, can, we, can we update that one? How would you like it updated? Well, um, we, we aren't going to actually um, map it. We're going to, we're... Um, Well, again, this is this uh, is just indicating what we're going to look at. What I have now is a summary of what we did in oh, yeah. our report. Okay, okay, got it, got it. Sorry. Uh, advocate for allocations from the county commissioners to support the aging network. Anybody want to leave that out? Support the development of a countywide strategy for services to aging adults. Anybody want to leave that out? Can we go back to the aging, the mapping funds thing and say on the fund mapping thing, maybe that's where we want to put the potential millage thing in there to say that utilize the fund map information that's been, that will have been provided by the county to consider. To consider. <clears throat> Or I, that might be a bit confusing with what we did versus what we're going to do in 24. Yeah. It might be better in 24. Yeah. And, and maybe the one about allocating uh, to support the aging network would that maybe that's where uh, that's where the millage would come in, would be to support the uh, the needs of seniors. I think that is a good location to put in the wording that right under that, 
to put in what people said they wanted as an objectives update. Um, and I can't replicate the wording, Marta gave, but about supporting needs-based millage. You're right. Can I, can I say something? Taylor, they're getting ready to turn my power off. So uh, can you let me in? I'm going to use my iPhone. Uh, I'm sharing so I can do what I can do. Okay, I'm going to try to get in because they're getting ready to turn my power off. Okay. Um, and Elizabeth, are you taking notes on the suggestions or did you want me to? I am taking notes. Okay. Um, the support the development of a countywide strategy for services for aging adults. I'm not hearing any no's. Work with the Hate Healthy Aging Collaborative to continue to identify inequities and gaps in services. Providing data on gaps in services. And then continue to build and expand partnerships. And then we have added the um, uh, objective uh, with the language Marta proposed about the millage and with Phyllis's suggestion that that go right under where the um, advocating for additional resources. So it makes sense. You know, yes. Elizabeth? Yes. On the last one about continue to build and expand. Um, the, can, can, I'm hearing an echo. Is there something? That's better. Oh. So can you just say that um, instead is a crucial part of supporting one fifth of the county's population? Is that that's what it is. Okay, is that everything, um, Elizabeth? Are there's anything else that needs to be in here that is not in here? Phyllis. The only thing I would add is when we list the commissioners for the Commission on Aging, we need to put the district that they represent, not where they live, um, because it's very confusing to list people as Ann Arbor when they're actually representing a certain district within Ann Arbor, for example. Sure. We can go back and fix that easily. Yes. Then uh, what the uh, communications committee will do is we are meeting on Monday to to look at this, do some wordsmithing. Uh, so any suggestions about anything that come to you, if you could please email them to me as soon as you can, because we're wanting to look at a good draft, fleshed out draft on Monday. We will... Marta, uh, we haven't had a chance to discuss the timing of getting it out to people so that they can look at it and be prepared to make a final vote at the December meeting. Um, do you have a thought about how that process should work? I think that we need to ask people to try to turn around any comments within a week um, because I think the Communications Committee needs time to sort of clean this up and make it pretty, as Elizabeth said. And also then we need to be able to get it back to commissioners in time for them to examine it before our December meeting and propose any additional changes or edits that they wanna make so that it's in final form by the time we get to the December meeting and we can determine whether we want to adopt it um, as submitted or whatever we have to do. So- And there's also, people may not know who are newer to the commission that then our chair, Marta, 
uh, does a presentation to the county board of commissioners, usually at a meeting in December. So the, it's very important to at a December meeting to approve it in final. So because sometimes that comes up right away, her opportunity to do that. Now, my understanding is that I'm tentatively scheduled to speak to the Board of Commissioners on the 6th of December. It hasn't been confirmed yet, but it's a tentative. And so that means we're going to have almost no time to turn around what we've adopted our December meeting into a, a, a credible presentation to the Board of Commissioners. So that's why I'm proposing an accelerated timeline. And also, you might want to put um, that uh, date on your calendars if you are available um, to show up and uh, you can make a comment in the public comment portion of the meeting. But it is nice for the county commissioners, I think, to see our interests collectively as well. Is that going to be like at seven o'clock? I believe so. But I will, as soon as I have a, a, a commitment from the County Board of Commissioners, then I will let you all know as the exact date and time. I'm just saying that that's a potential date that I would be speaking. Well, thank you for getting things to us as soon as you can. And um, I think this report reflects uh, all the work we've done and uh, the information we've gathered. Um, I did note when I was going on that our recordings and the presentations for this year are not fully on the county website yet. And anything we can do uh, Taylor, to have that happen so that we can say it's a truthful statement in December uh, to the commissioners. And if you want to see the presentation, you can look on the website. I will reach back out to Ashley Hall since she has all of the copies. Um, so I will see what. And if I can be helpful in that regard, let me know. Would it be helpful for me to send you an email requesting you to do that? Probably, yeah, so that way. Yep. Since I don't get on that website, I don't track it as much anyways. Okay. Um, anything else for that discussion? Okay. Um, it's time for subcommittee updates. So we'll start with communications. Do you have anything else you want to add, Elizabeth? No, we're also, after we get this in shape, hopefully we'll have a chance to talk about us, how we can share it more fully. But we, as always, we encourage you to reach out to your own commissioner. And once this is finalized in December, this might also be something you could use as an avenue to reach out to them, say, hey, I know this is shared with you in the whole commission meeting, but I... I'd like to reach out to you. Here it is. Do you have any questions? I just want to say thank you for Elizabeth. You did a nice job on that, putting that together. Thank you. Thank you, Elizabeth. Really appreciate your work. Okay. Uh, how about ARPA? Anything from ARPA? Uh, no, no. Uh, potential millage. So, power's going off. Okay. So I got your plug working. Okay. Did you? Back in the back far. <laughs> um, okay. Um, anything from future the future planning team? I think both of those are Marie, and I don't know if Marie is actually able to communicate right now. So we neither um, committee met last. We were hoping to meet last Friday, and and we did not. Okay. Um, is there anything from the town hall committee, Brenda? 
you're probably muted because you had someone speaking in the background. Hello? Okay. Do you have anything from the uh, town hall committee to report, subcommittee to report? Yes. yes, I do. I spoke with Gary <laughs> Munson last week and he said that we can have that any Friday in June, just he needs a date and a time. So I need that from you guys, when you would like to have it and what time. And uh, he wanted to know what things we were gonna need. And I said, a mic, a podium and um, some tables. So we're all set. Well, I think that the obvious Friday to avoid is the one in which we already have our meeting, but okay. any Friday in June, but I, I'm not aware of any conflicts. Does anybody else have any issues that they want to bring up about that? <coughs> Jennifer, the two Jennifers, Juliet, anybody? Elizabeth? Elizabeth, what dates do you guys want? I actually don't have a comment about the date, but in the list of things you're doing, since they might not be as used to hosting a um, meeting where people may have questions after presentations as uh, the township was, you might want to specify to Gary that we need ways to microphones for the audience to be able to ask their questions and be heard okay. if you're okay. if you're planning a dialogue part of the yeah. town hall i don't know if you are or not yeah we are just like we had last time i thank you for reminding me i will see if gary has two mics one for the audience and um uh, speakers and tables and chairs and he asked me i said approximately a hundred uh so all I need is a date and we can take care of the rest of the stuff. So uh, June what? Come on, anybody. Uh, June 14th is flag day. All right, let's do June 14th. How about one o'clock, guys? 14th is a Thursday. Okay, 15th, June 15th? June 14th? What do you... It's Friday. Yeah, that's a Friday. My bad. I was looking at July. Ah. So we're gonna go June what, guys? Give me a date. June 14th. 14th. Jennifer, That's a Friday. Jennifer, yes. raise your hand up. Is there something that you wanted to? I just had a question. Will it be in the same place as it was this year? No, it's, we're gonna have it on the Western part of the county. Okay. Uh, I think uh, Celine Community Center or some, yeah, something like that, but it's gonna be on the Western part. And just my comment from the last location, it just wasn't um, senior friendly as far as the stairs and no hand railings. So right. just Handic making sure it's a little place that is- Handicapped yeah. accessible, yes. Yes, okay. Yeah. We will make sure of that. And I'm sure the community center is uh, handicapped accessible. I haven't been there yet, but from what I'm hearing it is yeah so june 14th at 1 p.m you guys one o'clock okay i'll let him know and um brenda would you remind us what the topic is oh we gotta we gotta do all that you guys come on we haven't even gotten to that part yet okay yeah we got plenty of time for that we got a whole year almost so you guys come up with some topics we're gonna do this as a a group not you're not gonna put that all on me. Mm -mm. You, you already have a list of people you've secured already, right? So far, pretty much, yes, yes, I do. Do you want to send that to me, and I'll send that out? I sure will. I sure will, my dear. I think this is a something that the subcommittee should be working on, rather than the entire commission on aging. So I think maybe not to send that list out to the entire commission at this point, but maybe to Brenda and the commission subcommittee. I think also the subcommittee should come up with a potential topic or two and bring it back and um, let the entire commission consider that, rather than asking each one of us to contribute. If anybody has any individual ideas and you want to send them to Brenda, go for it. Yeah, and that's what I wanted to do, you guys, secure place first, so that won't be part of, we won't be wasting time about what time, what date, 
that's all done. Now we can just concentrate the subcommittee on who we want to be there and what we want the topic to be, and then we can present it to the rest of the commission. Sounds good. Jennifer, okay, Jennifer. June 14th at 1 p.m. I will let Gary know. You're okay, okay. Anything else on that subcommittee? Okay, we're up to report from the Board of Commissioners, Annie. Everyone, I, I don't have anything else to report other than what I've already shared. So if anyone has any questions about anything else, I guess now is a good time to ask them. Otherwise, I think I've shared as much as I can at this point. Okay. Thank you, Annie. I do have a, a question. Um, given the, the short time frame, they'll be about issuing the rest of the, the RP for the rest of the ARPA funds and um, I am wondering if it might be possible for when the RFP is sent to not have to depend on you, Annie, to get that information, get it out to us, but request um, that the relevant person in, in county government uh, send all of us a copy mm -hmm. as well. And then, yes, I can, then it's not on to you to have to do that. Sure, I could ask them to do that. Is that my hand up? Oh. Okay, anything else to um, ask any? I would note that on our agenda, there's a live link to the upcoming meeting calendar for the Board of Commissioners if anybody you know, wants to spend some time going to those meetings. I will also note that we still have two open seats, one in District 8 and one at large. And there is a link on our agenda about to, to direct you to the application form if you're so interested in joining the Commission on Aging. And I oh, did if call I could add... Pastor Hatter and he said he did file, so I don't know. Okay. I, I think Annie was getting ready to say something. Oh, sorry. I was just going to add, I recommended to somebody um, to apply for an at-large seat, and he did. And so I I passed his information along oh, to Justin. I don't know about other applicants. I haven't received any other um, emails, but I don't get the chair of the board gets to make all of those. Um, but the person who I recommended has been involved in intergenerational work for a while, and I recommended that this might be a good board for him to sit on. Excellent. Good. And I know Good. everybody else on the commission is also reaching out to their contacts to see if we can fill those open seats while we still have a year to go in the term. So, okay, uh, report from the chair. Um, I've received an invitation from All Seasons Ann Arbor, uh, which is a retirement home, to speak about the work on the Commission on Aging. So I'm working on setting a date with them at this point. Um, we got an invitation from the Alzheimer's Association to talk about collaborative uh, opportunities. So I believe the officers are gonna try to meet with them and talk it over. Um, and I noted uh, just recently that the Office for Community and Economic Development for Washtenaw County has a new director. And here's what she says are her priorities. Focus on efforts to expand senior programs, affordable housing and better infrastructure. So I am- hey. I'm going to try to get an appointment with her to talk about the work of the Commission on Aging and uh, see what we can do in terms of expanding their work. Elizabeth, did you have anything on that? Uh, it sounds like that meeting also might be an ideal opportunity to ask if she might be willing to come and speak to the Commission about the work their office does, because it sounds yeah. like a lot of... Um, the kinds of things that we've been hearing as issues are things that would be relevant to that office. So what better time to get on board than right at the beginning? Yeah, go for it. Anybody have any questions about work of the chair? Um, what, I am sorry, what was that first group that you said that you received an invitation from? All Seasons Ann Arbor. Um, I missed it. It's 
a very large retirement home and it's over um, near uh, Cobbles, not, uh, wait a minute here, just a minute, um, Parker Mill um, County Park. It's over in that area. Yes, she uh, contacted me and, and I emailed her back. Uh, she kind of want me to kind of get the speakers for her and I'll do the best I can. Um, I told her I would get back with her and send her the names, but she'll have to give them a call. Yeah. You know. Yeah. But, That's what um, she wanted was just the contact information so she didn't have to look for it. Right, right. Okay. Um, next thing is new business. I'm not aware of any new business. Um, our next meeting is December 1st, and we will definitely be taking up the final version of the annual report. Um, other things to be determined. Not sure if we have a guest speaker or not. Um, so I think at this point, we've actually reclaimed 16 entire minutes of our time for the day. <laughs> Well, I just want to say to you guys, I really like um, the pr presentations. They're very educational for us. Um, or they have been for me anyway. Um, and thank you, uh, Elizabeth, for getting, did you get this attorney this time, Elizabeth? Yes. Yes. Okay. She was really good. Thank you very much. Um, people might know, uh, that there's a, a separate um, division of law focused on elder law. And mm -hmm. Michigan has a very robust special section in the state bar um, for elder law. And there are firms that specialize just in elder law. And most firms uh, are willing to provide presentations, do outreach, and um, so they're often very open to that. So you may want to, um, for the organizations you work with specifically, reach out to members of the elder law section of the state bar and uh, see if that's appropriate for looking for speakers or gaining more information uh, on issues specific to seniors. Elizabeth, see if you can get a discount rate for seniors who want to um, have this lady do up some wheels and things. Why don't you do that? I don't get a hundred dollars. I don't think that's an appropriate request to make of this woman. Uh, but I do. <laughs> Legal Services of South Central Michigan is a good referral, and I, I'm glad that we have that opportunity to tell people about it. I'll Are they pretty that low in, uh, this? As well? This does raise something, an idea that came to me, we talked that we may want to consider because if you've ever worked with uh, Legal Services of Southeastern Michigan, they are wonderful, but they are extremely busy. Yeah, yeah. And this is something that we might want to look at in the coming year, possibly as something we might, think about, strategize, is there a way that we could help make the services getting those important legal documents more easily for people who can't afford the wonderful services? I'll show you know you what, from. that might be something we might want to approach the county commissioners about what can they help assist us with? You know, it's not a bad, all they can do is say no. I do think that it might be appropriate to ask Legal Services of South Central Michigan to offer their uh, pre-prepared forms at the town hall as a resource. Yeah. Brenda, why don't oh, you yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'll put them down. <clears throat> I don't have a contact, but I'll figure it out. Legal Services. Okay. Marta, you are so smart. You okay, think of all done, the Now that we're done flattering the chair, I'll seek a motion for adjournment. Okay, legal services, right, Marta? Yes. Okay. Do we have a motion? I'll Brenda make a motion moves. to adjourn. Okay, Brenda move, Margaret is supporting. Uh, we do not need to take a vote, but every uh, individual vote, but everybody can signify by saying yes, putting their thumbs up, nodding, whatever you want to do. Yes. 
Consider Happy ourselves. Thanksgiving, everyone. We forgot to say that. We will thank everyone for participating and this meeting is officially ended. Thank you. All right. Well done. Did he say how long?